So I minister to people and we minister faith and get them, <laughs> get them into, into the place of uh, uh, believing the word of God. Well, what I found is that your faith has nothing to do with anything except the word of God. Now, if you believe that you uh, have health, well, guess what? You have to eat some food, but it doesn't take any faith to eat food. Your, your faith is not in the food, it's in the health, the promise of God. So I tell people, I say, listen, uh, if you, you got access, you can go to a doctor and you can get some help and you get some medicines. Minister to the symptom of what your problem is. Stand firm in the word of God for his covenant promise to heal you, deliver you. But don't be stupid. Don't be foolish. And that foolishness I've seen is spread around the world in a lot, a lot of cases. Now, there are some things that I've held on in faith to that I was not going to get any, any kind of medical help at all. And I did get healed. But now I've been working in this for 50 years. And as Jesus said, I mean, you, you can't even turn one hair on your hair white, you know. Where, where do you think your faith is at? So as we're talking about faith tonight, we can look at, a, at, at several circumstances where Jesus talked about the faith, faith, uh, <laughs> that's right, having uh, different levels of faith. All right, so... Uh, Let's see where I got it here. Let me get my notes out here. Different levels of faith so that we don't judge one another according to your own faith. You just look at it and realize that faith will grow. In Romans 4, 19 through 20, being not weak in faith, Abraham considered not his own body that was now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he did not stagger at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. So he grew strong in faith because he placed his hope on the word a promise that God gave him. So considering what the hope is, because all of you have probably read the scripture that says that faith is the substance of what we hope for. All right, now, uh, those of you that have a car and, and that drive around in India, uh, you may not realize it, but you are exercising hope that you actually can get from one place to the other without running out of gas, without having a flat tire, without, without uh, getting into an accident. And that's really in you. And so then you, you believe on that hope and you go and you, you go. So everything that we do here for, in this time, I mean, I'm gonna, you get up in the morning and those of you that are married that have uh, precious wives, uh, maybe she's already gotten your breakfast ready. Well, one thing your body's going to tell you as soon as you wake up is, I hope I can get some eggs and bacon this morning. <laughs> okay. All right. So we've got faith in, in the area that we know that it grows. As it's written, I've made you the father of many nations, he said. He was appointed the father in the sight of God in whom he believed. God gives life to the dead and speaks of the non-existent things as if they already existed. Faith do, does not work with things that already are. Faith is the substance of things that are not yet in existence. All right, so... The things that we see, uh, like with healing and something, something comes on your body, people getting sick, or they get it, okay? and you got to work through it. Go to the doctor, 
get get some medical get some pills to take away the headaches don't be foolish about it don't be foolish about it. it has nothing to do with your faith it has to do with a circumstance if you had a flat tire on your car you probably have to get out and fix it not just sit there hopefully wishing that it would go away all right so we've got spiritual reality in faith but faith is the substance of things that we hope for so let's go back just a minute and look at what we consider to be hope. The world has lots of hopes for the things of their flesh, the things of their, their earthly life. Our hope is always founded in the promise of God. Like Abraham, okay, he was, his body was dead, there's no way. I mean, he couldn't even make love to his wife. How was he going to have a kid? Well, God had to do something. But his hope was not in his ability to do anything. It was in God's promise. Now, when we look at a promise, we also understand about seeds that are the word of God. The word of God is like a seed. It's, it's there. It may not appear into your reality yet, but it's a hope. In that hope, the hope of what you want, what you have use for, what you need, in the hope, based on the word of promise, is everything that faith then begins to work with. Faith brings that hope alive. It's like the energy that takes a seed in the ground and causes it to break open and create some sort of plant, <coughs> some sort of a crop. It, the energy of it, it, the energy is that like that faith, but we're talking about something spiritual and not physical. <coughs> so the hope, faith works with the hope. With the hope. So, for example, whatever you're looking for. I liked it when Jesus said that the poor are rich in faith. Because, and, and what was the good news to the poor people? Now, many of you, I don't know if you've ever really experienced poverty. I lived on the streets in America. I had no money, no way of getting money. Uh, I had to totally believe God every day. But my rest was in hope that God would meet all of my needs every day. And then I would confess that. And faith then coming out of my heart through my words. Faith doesn't work in the mind. It's not a mental activity. It's a spiritual activity. So let's take salvation. It says a person must believe in their heart and confess with their mouth unto salvation. That's a principle of faith. Nobody's going to get saved until they confess that salvation. And you don't know of anybody that hasn't done that. They can wishfully hope. They can think in their minds that maybe God somehow will save me somehow, 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 somehow. But when the Holy Spirit moves on them, they will confess out of their mouth. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, as my Deliverer, as my Savior. Faith works from the soul out through the tongue outward. A lot of people are into mental faith. It doesn't produce anything but vain imaginations. Jesus didn't think something, and then it, it appeared. He spoke it. In everything he did, he spoke it. This is what the Father taught him, to speak words of faith. Inside, he had it as a hope, a desire, something that he wanted to do. All right, so you're getting the basic principle here. 
Okay, first of all, a real separation between this carnal concept of believing and having faith. Faith is alive. Faith is not a mental action of some kind of force or some kind of uh, supernatural thing. It is a living spiritual being given to us from a living kingdom from the living God. It's a servant. And I want you to know that faith is one of my closest friends that I've known for all of these years. I talk to faith just like I'm talking to you. Faith gives me ideas. So what about this? You know, sometimes I'm talking to different parts of the kingdom of God, but it's faith that brings me to that, that conclusion that phew, I'm going to release her to go and produce something. Everything that I have, everything I possess, everything that I'm doing, I do it according to these principles because this is the way a son of God lives. This is how we live by faith. Whatever's happening to you today, in your outer life today, in the day that you're coming up, the Sunday that you got coming up, has already been programmed by your words on what you're going to do. Maybe something will come up that you didn't necessarily speak out, but you can know that it's part of the Father's plan that you didn't know. If we knew everything that was going to happen all the time, we would probably mess it up pretty good, <laughs> just because we're human, okay? Just because we're here, okay? So the perfection of our relationship with faith is based upon that living relationship. And for us here in this temporary time, we bring that faith and we exercise it based upon the hope. Okay, so doc, Dr. Uh, uh, my brother, Dr. Christian there, he, he, he uh, all of his patients come to him with the hope of getting healed. Well, maybe the other doctors send them to him as a radiologist, and, and but they're all in this place of hope, not necessarily based upon anything that is a promise of God, but of a promise in the world. Now, if I go, if I go and I have a uh, I go work out at the gym and I work a little hard and, and a little later my muscles start getting sore. I'll speak to those muscles to relax, but I know that after all this time, I'm going to go and get the promise of the ibuprofen, the aspirin, because it's got a promise that it's going to take the pain away from my, and, and calm my nerves down. I speak to my body all the time but I don't have to all the time. The word of God is settled in our hearts, in our souls. Why is that? Think about that. Why is the world, the word, how is the word settled in us? It is very simple. It is him who's alive in us. The foundation of being born again, of being saved, is the cross. We're not standing there looking at Jesus on the cross who died for us and, and just, oh, Jesus, oh, we're not doing that. Because it, he tells us, Galatians 2.20, that we were crucified with him. That our old man the, the natural human man has already died with him. Now, when we come into this area here, here is where your faith is real. It came alive when you first began to believe. To believe in such a thing that you and I, who we can see and touch and feel and hear, uh, were crucified with Christ, it takes Faith, it takes the substance of things that we're hoping for, 
things that haven't yet appeared. It takes the living God, faith in him, who would call that which is not as though it already is. To get saved and wait all your life on the, on the earth to die so you could go to heaven is not the plan of God. It's been that way for 2,000 years. But the plan of God is according to the seed of his promised word that's come into our heart. And that plan is he's transforming us into the very expression of Jesus himself. We look at the word. What does it say? Okay. It says, because we are sons of God, born of God, that the spirit of God came into our soul and began to transform our soul into being a son of God. That's what God does in the soul. That's why you can know that once you come into the life of, 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 of the word of God, that you change. You're aware of it inside. Maybe the people outwardly don't see it because they only see you according to your job or, or your, 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 your male or female, but you know the changes. Not necessarily can you understand it all. You just know you're being changed. That's the Holy Spirit working in our souls. That's where faith comes to minister to us, to get us to look at that seed of hope and believe that that seed, the word of God, cannot be anything but alive. Not a dead word. It's a seed, a living seed that will produce what it was sent forth to do. Now, I'll give you an example, really kind of a funny example. I'm, I'm in New York City, and I'm crossing over a bridge going from uh, Manhattan over to Brooklyn, and it's a walking bridge. And so I'm, I'm walking across the bridge, and I see this guy coming toward me. And he's kind of got his eyes down, and nobody, nobody looks at one another. You know, you know what I'm saying. All right, so, and so he came up. He was about two feet from me, and I said, hey. He lifted his eyes up, and just as he did, I said, believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. And I just kept walking. I took that seed and I shoved it into his soul. He had no defense. He wasn't being defensive in any way. I didn't try to analyze him or talk to him or reason with him. I just threw that seed into him. It was so funny. It was so funny. I just kept going. Two weeks later, I'm in a meeting and I come in a little bit late. As I come in, they haven't started uh, singing yet. And the guy says, there he is, there he is. That's the one who spoke that word into my heart. He was pointing to me. God brought that word of salvation up just like that. And the guy got saved. Well, that happened back in the early days that just reinforced the fact you have that living seed in your mouth, in your heart. When you talk to other people about a real living relationship with God, you don't have to try to intellectually get them to understand. They're not going to understand. They're as carnal as a bunch of ducks. Maybe you used to be a quack quack yourself, duck, duck, before all of a sudden that word, the faith brought that word into being. Faith the substance of what we hope for and the evidence of what we don't see. That faith has risen. That life has come up in us. It's not about a bunch of religious stuff about what about this and what about that? What do you think Jesus meant there? And it's about the living word of God. That's what we come to know as we begin to feed on the tree of life not the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. <clears throat> All right, so listen to this here in Hebrews 6, 19. We have this hope. Remember, little seed 
of hope, which is the promise. We have this hope as a sure and steadfast anchor for the soul. Anchor for the soul. Now, the, the boat is going along. It's got a big rope, and it puts the anchor down into the ocean bottom so that the boat doesn't float away. Hope is an anchor for us. It cannot slip. It cannot break down. <clears throat> Hope. And it reaches into the Holy of Holies in heaven, in past the veil of the temple, so that we are connected into the Holy of Holies by hope that's connected us, like an anchor connected us. So that whatever there is of the hope of salvation you never can get lost. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Because once he fishes you in, he keeps you. <laughs> once that seed of believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Once it comes alive inside you, then the Holy Spirit begins to work. Faith comes to work. Now, there's a lot of stuff going on in the mind. There's a lot of stuff because it, it's hard to realize this reality of the spiritual world and at the same time be connected to this physical world. So he tells us to walk by faith in his promises. So we have to bring those promises down into this world. I don't need to really focus too much on a promise about heaven. Heaven's already there. The word of God tells me that I am already raised up and seated with Christ. It's already done. So Jesus has come into us now to live here. And everything that he's doing with us here. Think about it. This is Jesus. What is he doing in you and through you? Well, there's a lot of things, but basically, he is bringing forth the fruit of the hope, bringing forth the life of that seed. So it's his faith now that we have. When we were in Christianity, and uh, there's millions of believers that are, are in this realm of Christianity, that, that they have faith. There was first the Jews, the, the Jews had faith towards God, that, that God out there, the, the one God, the God of heaven out there towards him. Then when you become a believer, you begin to have faith that he's there, that he loves you that somehow he's going to help you, and you begin to believe in his promises. But when you come into the reality of being a son, then you come into his faith. <clears throat> his faith. Your faith is gone because you're gone. This is something that only faith can make alive for you. Faith is the substance of what you hope for. So you read that scripture. I was crucified with Christ, yet I live, yet it's not I, it's Christ who lives in me. That word right there coming alive in you more and more every day. The reality that you're already saved, you're already seated in heavenly places, you're already part literally part of the body of Jesus that's resurrected, but then it's him in this soul and in that body here on the earth. What is he doing? Bringing forth a wonderful crop from a bunch of wonderful seeds of life and love and joy and peace. Everything he died on the cross, all of the curse, 
And you know that he died to all the curse of the law. He died to poverty, sickness, disease. He died to accidents. He, di he died to everything that was adverse, that was not life and blessings. He died. Now he's alive in you to live in those lives. Now, so let's say we're in the financial realm of financial world. We're, we're doing finances and we have a responsibility for people's finances. And, and, and okay, so I could take on the care of that and it would drive me to drinking or, or smoking dope like they do in America. I mean, it would drive you nuts. There's so much pressure of all these people connected to your mind that you're responsible for their money. But when Christ is in you, regardless of what your work is, we learn to cast all our care upon him. We don't take on the care of the world. Now, each little circumstance that we get to, we do the best we know how to do. We, we operate by faith that God in us is doing the best he can possibly do. It's just in us. It's part of his character to do the best. Faith, the substance, a material, spiritual material. Faith is so wonderful. I told you earlier that one of my best friends that I've known for years, think about this. God created faith to be a spirit that has the ability to do something no other spirit can do now he can give life to wisdom and wisdom knows exactly what it's to do with that life but he doesn't create the life he can give charge to angels to minister to you in ways but they don't create the life faith has the very essence of god to create to bring into matter, to bring into reality, to existence, the things hoped for. Turn it in itself into the very thing that you hope for. It's kind of like if you understand computers, it reads all of the DNA of the, of the, of the, of the little seed, and it says, yes, I can be that. And it becomes the substance, the material substance. It is spiritual, but it can also create things in the physical. Substance. Spiritual material creating substance that did not exist before. Reading what was in the hope. So faith becomes the very life of the hope. Faith has the ability to literally become whatever the hope of the word of God is. This is the way the father did it from the beginning. One of the first spiritual beings, there's not really a, a lineage, but Faith was created at the very beginning to give power to all of the kingdom of God so that they could do the work that they were receiving from the Father to do, so that they could do the work. Every one of them operate by and through and with faith. Now, over and over again in the word of God, it tells us to have faith in the blood of Jesus. That is through faith in the blood of Jesus that we get saved, faith in the blood of Jesus that we're sanctified, faith in the blood of Jesus that we were redeemed, faith in the blood of Jesus that we enter into the holy place, faith in the blood, faith in the blood, faith in the blood. Okay. And I've, I ministered on that, I don't know, a couple of months ago, maybe. And uh, I will say this to you. Faith worked 
with the Spirit of God to become a holy sperm. The Spirit and the flesh world connected to impregnate Mary that brought Jesus into being. Now, see, you got that. You like that. You can't explain that to people outside that don't have any reality of Christ. They can't get that. There's no logic to something spiritual becoming physical. There, there's, there, there's no reasoning that can help them comprehend it. That's why I say you can just speak those words directly to them. Uh, let me see. Something happened to my screen here. There I am. Coming back. Okay. Very good. All right, thank you. All right, so think about this, about faith. First of all, it's a living spiritual being that is given to the, us as, as, as a servant, but also as a friend. The, the, the servants in the kingdom of God are, are nothing like any concept of servant here on the earth. Nothing like servant, nothing like slave, uh, nothing. The, these servants are, are, are living, loving, super wonderful creatures, and we're sons in this kingdom. It's not just a bunch of angels flying around. There's, there's a gazillion living spiritual beings in the kingdom of God. We're born to be sons, not angels, not spirits floating around. We were born to be sons. This was the Father's plan from the beginning way back before anything was created, to have sons. As Jesus said, a seed, talking about himself, must fall to the ground and die, or it abides alone. So also then the Lord, we know that he was the firstborn, born again. He had to completely die, body and soul, separated from God, and then God brought him back to life again. He was born again. That man, when you, when you see Jesus in, in heaven, you're not going to recognize him as a man or the Jesus of Nazareth or anything about it. He is glorified son of God returned back home. And he's waiting for us, waiting for the Holy Spirit to finish the work that it was sent to do. And that time is upon us because of the fact, this fact, no other generation has ever had the revelations of being sons of God as we. Not even the first generation. They had salvation. Then they, then they got into the gifts of the Spirit. Only up until just almost 25 years ago did he quicken, bring alive, mixed faith with that hope of our eternal destiny, our sonship. Our sonship. All right, so if you're walking down the street, and as you're walking down the street, you, you find a driver's license. Now, or, or something in India, I don't know what they do, but, but in, in our country, we have a driver's license with a picture on it. Maybe they have that in India too. Something, some kind of ID with a picture on it. All right, so you look around, nobody, you don't see anybody dropped it, and you look at it, and it's got the person's name, maybe where they live, maybe uh, their weight or height, and a picture. That little license there is evidence of something that exists that you never saw before. You don't know that it exists. You never had any contact with it, but that's the evidence of it. Faith itself is the evidence of what you hope for. The material, spiritual material transforming itself into physical time, physical material, substance of what we hope for, and also the very evidence of what we don't yet see. That's why I say minister to the symptoms. 
Okay, <laughs> don't suffer if you don't have to. I mean, modern science and medical and all that stuff, man, it's amazing what they can do today. Praise God for it, because it wasn't the devil that created that. He hates humans. He wants them to suffer all he can. But we increase and we grow in faith. Now, I myself, I've grown in faith over many, many years with many trials of faith. And my faith is is in a sense, uh, strong. Now, I say strong, if I can only compare that to somebody who doesn't have strong faith. <laughs> so Jesus talked about these levels of faith, okay? He said, um, Jesus said in Mark 4, he says, why are you so fearful? Is it that you don't have any faith? No faith. So then he said in another one about little faith, immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught the man and said to him, oh, you of little faith, little faith, why did you doubt? But then a wonderful thing happened with a heathen lady that wasn't even, wasn't even a Jew. Jesus said when he saw her, he marveled. She said, but Lord, Master, even the little puppies get to eat off of the master's table. He marveled and said to them that, that were around, said, verily I say to you, I have not found so great faith, not in Israel. So the poor are extremely strong in basic faith. Their faith is in this Jesus, who's their savior, who will help them much stronger than rich people. Rich people, and uh, uh, well, they don't have to be rich. They just have plenty of money or a good job. Whatever. Hey, the, the snare for those people is that they, they get away from, from faith in the basic covenant promise of prosperity into faith of their ability to make money. Then you just end up serving your ability to make money. There's no longer any faith there. So as a son, I, I ask you this week, allow faith to come and minister to you. Just say, faith, come and, and, and show me in my life. Show me in the life. Show me, is there something that I'm doing that I'm not walking by faith, that I'm not walking with you in? Okay, because everybody has something. It, it may be something very small, but we want everything you know why it's so important to god it is so important that faith works together with hope see the jews have got this hope but they got no faith mixed with it faith is the life god loves faith i love i love faith i mean love faith so precious and for this reason it is impossible to please our Father without faith. Go into your week. Go into your life. You can write it, you can write it down, you know, as the thoughts come to you. Is there something that I'm doing that's not based on faith in some promise? Now, if you don't know the promises, then you got to look them up. For example, uh, he gives wisdom unto them that need it. Well, uh, a lot of us, I mean, I'm, I'm asking for wisdom in a lot of things uh, continually. I asked for wisdom several years and years ago. Wis wisdom, come to me. I, 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 I need my mind healed. I need my mind healed so I can function here in the world because drugs blew my mind away. And I needed to be able to have some kind of reasonable way of seeing things. Well, he did much more than that. He brought my mind into a place of being able to understand uh, mathematical formulas, uh, languages. I mean, he brought my mind into extreme places that I don't even use. I don't even have to use them. But what I'm saying is, by faith in his word, his word. So I teach people uh, in, in, our, in our business seminar, uh, it, it is God who gives you promotion. It says it, it's a promise, it's in the word. God gives you promotion. Well, they need more money to take care of their family. Or just because you want more money, it's okay to want more. 
if you base it on his word, because his word of prosperity is unlimited. And then as you grow in that prosperity, he'll give you the wisdom on how not to be a slave to the money and the things of the world. Teaching you how not to be a slave. Okay, good. Faith comes by the word of God. A lot of people, and in this day and age, as the scripture says, there are many coming to and fro, seeking after people to uh, hear the teaching, get the new teaching, having itching ears, the scripture says. Well, sons, when we hear the word of God, now I hear the word of God every day in all kinds of different ways. I heard the word of God watching Netflix tonight. Some guy quoted a scripture. Anytime that word comes forth, I get the life out of it. I have the faith to grab the life out of it. I can listen to all the preacher guys on all, all over the world out there, and, and I can grab the life out of the word, not necessarily out of their understanding. So we have faith in hearing the word that when we hear the faith comes. What, what does it mean faith comes? Well, if it's a word of promise, faith is going to be right there. If it's just a word about the history of Jonah going into the whale, um, it will help you. It, it will really help you if you ever get swallowed by a whale. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In other words, it's his promises of blessing that he cares about. And it's, it's so against the 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 carnal mind and the sin conscious mind to believe god that he truly loves us and truly wants us to be blessed so that we can be a blessing to others it's hard to believe that in that carnal mind so the holy spirit every once in a while ah just reminds you because because i know when the holy spirit comes over me a lot of times it's just I, I i let go of everything I don't even care if I'm here on the earth. It's because it's, it's the down payment, the, the earnest, the, the sincerity that, that where we're going to, we'll have the fullness of God. That's it. All right. So he said this in John, 1 John 3, 4. Whoever is born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So let's take that word. Whoever is born of God overcomes the world. How do you become born of God? Believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Savior that died on the cross. You believe. And that's when you begin to get born again. That's when you're born again. That's when you become spiritually alive with God as a son. Doesn't mean anything's changed in your soul. Doesn't mean your body's instantly healed. Doesn't mean you can walk on one. Doesn't mean anything. it means one thing. You're born again. You're a new baby in Christ. Now, do you have to have faith for that? You guys that are listening to me. Do you know that you've been born again? If you do, you don't have to have faith for it. It's already there. What you already have, what you already know that you have and you exercise it and you know it's true and it's alive in you. You don't have to have faith for it. And because of that, we grow from faith to faith to faith. We grow from faith to faith, from glory to glory. The trying of your faith is the most important exercise that you can do. Had a sister recently, young gal, got uh, breast cancer, was just in it. I mean, they, they took her in, put her into, into chemo, everything, everything. She refused to unbelieve 
She went to the doctors. Finally, about six months uh, uh, before she passed, she said, I'm not going to the doctors anymore. I'm not letting them do any more to me. God's either going to heal me or take me home. Her faith was either God's going to heal me or take me home. I'm going to be healed in this life or I'm getting a new body and I'll never care again. That was her faith. Faith unto death. And she was a precious little sister. I loved her. But what I liked the most was the preciousness that the father saw her faith. I mean, they did everything medically they could do, and they weren't going to save her. And she didn't give up on her faith. She just took it on past death. The trying of our faith is more precious than the object of our faith. Because in the trying of your faith, like a little child, until they struggle and, and, and wrestle and, and, and roll over and get up on their knees, their, their muscles do not grow without trial. They don't learn to talk without trial. Their minds don't learn to operate without trials. The trying of the faith causes you to have greater faith. So we live by faith. I mean, I'm living every day saying, okay, Father, I'm ready to go home. To, let, take me out of here. Take me out of here. I'm ready to go. Okay, I don't hear anything. Well, what am I going to do today? I'm living by the promises of the word of God. So <clears throat> I was looking for a piece of furniture for uh, one of my spare rooms, uh, a bedroom, and uh, need, needed something. And so I looked, uh, went to the internet, went, and there was a, some person that was giving this thing away for free. Oh, okay. Well, I'll call them up. Okay. Contacted them, <clears throat> went over to their house. They were going to give me this brand new leather couch for free. And I realized immediately that somebody had given it to them for free. Then it turns out that they were leaving the country. They're going to Cambodia as missionaries. So we had a little Holy Ghost party there. And uh, what I'm saying is you are a son of God. The word says that you are led by the spirit of God. led by the spirit of god not you have to try to find the spirit of god to be led you are led Every, everything that you do if you're aware that you're led then you're always looking for the lord to use you in some manner even if it's just going to the market to get a coca-cola or going to starbucks to get some coffee you you're looking for the opportunity to sow some seed or water some seed in somebody's heart. That's living by faith. You got the personal promises that are for you, but then it's Christ living through you. Now, uh, a lot of people that, I, that, that I've seen before, and, and I know about it, and I, I went through the same trials. Oh, if I've, if I've got Jesus and I'm full of faith, then I should go heal all the sick and Go do this and go do it. I want you to know how, how far I went with that. I have healed the sick. I have raised the dead. Christ in me did it. I went into a hospital in, in, in Texas. I went up into the, 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 the ward. Uh, let me think, what is it? The death row. I don't know. The, I forget the name of the ward. I went up in there and I started going through the rooms. Now, these places... At the time that I did it, we're not very secure. There weren't too many guards. There weren't too many people uh, watching, and people would come and go. I went in and started healing people. I got down to six rooms before the security people, the nurses, everybody was freaking out that I was upsetting all these patients, and they were getting up and putting their clothes on. <laughs> Faith. Well, 
I'm glad. So I just walked on out of the hospital and I said, well, I guess that's what, something we're not going to do anymore. He says, there's too much security these days. I'll put you in jail. You try to do something like that. Okay. So then I was out working in the streets. And uh, as, as I, I just walking up and down the streets of the city and there's a lot of people on the streets and people need this and that. And, and as I would walk along, nice looking people walking along and I could, just got the discernment that they were ill, they were sick. And I'd stop them and say, the Lord wants me to pray for you. And I'd pray for them and, and, and they'd get healed. Well, what came of that was I started doing that in our church. Now, you're supposed to operate in the gifts of the Spirit in the church, right? Right? Sure. <laughs> we started doing that. I'm telling you, the devil was bringing, well, uh, the angels were bringing in demon-possessed people. Now, this is not something they, that you see in America, demon-possessed people in churches. You don't see them. Those devils hide. They came in. They started coming in. We started casting them out. People started getting healed. <clears throat> now, at the time, we were the only church on television on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. They didn't have cable television at that time. And it started getting well known around the city. And the Lord said, stop. That's not what I want you to do. Okay. That seemed to be what I was supposed to do. That's what you're supposed to do. And I'm walking by faith in the promise of the gifts of the spirit. But then he showed me in a vision, if I would have continued doing that through the television network and in the streets, all it would do would be drawing people to me. That's all it would do. And I met these guys that have those gifts. And I tell you, they live isolated. Their only friends are some other little preacher guys that they can be real with. They can't get out in public. They, they, they are in bondage. And the Lord didn't want that for me. He wanted me to go throughout the world and bring sons to him. <laughs> so... Basically, I began to release faith to multiply that gifting into other people, as many people as I could, laying hands on them and actually imparting the laying on of hands, the words to speak, to cast out devils, imparting it to other people so that it would multiply and multiply and multiply, not to keep it to myself. So I went from faith to do it to faith to multiply it, which was far greater. Now we get people all over the world. That multiplication comes with, comes into everybody <laughs> that comes to the reality of being a son. It's part of the DNA of the seed of sonship. So I want you to know this, that, that, to rest in the faith that your father already knows your steps before you go into tomorrow and the next day and the next day. You can rest. You don't have to be fearful or doubtful about anything you're doing. It is Jesus in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. His good pleasure. Now, when it's his good pleasure, you get a great deal of pleasure out of it. Uh, man, I have, I've had an incredible life. Uh, raised up four kids, and we did vacations all over the world. God blessed me financially in business before I went into ministry. And, and it was his pleasure because he was the dad. He was the businessman. He was the father. He was the husband. And as I lived in that faith, man, he blessed me beyond my, just beyond. But there were great trials. Trials, trials. Yeah. As it says, rejoice when you are in abundance of trials. 
the trying of your faith is more precious. Now, when I say the trying of your faith, it's the relationship you have as a son to believe that faith is the substance of what you hope for. And it's real and it's alive and it's full of power. Start right where you are this week. Take into account your life, your relationships with you, the people around you. Are you living in relationship with them by faith or by the old man's understanding? As the word says, we are now no longer to know, you know, have all of our relationship based upon the outer man. Get everything into captivity to walking by faith. Don't think you have to do it all at once. A little bit, a little bit. The Lord will show you as you open it up and say, Lord, show me. Show me how to walk by faith in my, in my work. Well, maybe it's just to sit there and have a good attitude about it. Maybe it's to go into something that's difficult without fear, without any doubt. Jesus, huh, greater is he in you than he that's in the world. See, he, where faith is, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all doubt, all unbelief. It doesn't mean that we know everything and how to do everything, but we don't doubt that God does, and he's alive in us. Amen? Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. I get so excited when I get to talk to you guys. I, I'm telling you, it's like, uh, it's like I'm just flying right down through this internet connection live, right, right into you. Like I'm sitting there right there in, in front of you. It's wonderful. Very wonderful. I'd like to have you face to face. And uh, if they ever open up those airline flights uh, into India, then uh, we'll set a schedule and come over and see you face to face. I love you. Now, this is something that What's took that a done? lot of faith for me to come into is to love you without knowing anything about you, without knowing your life or your troubles or your family. How can I love you? <clears throat> because faith has taught me that we are members one of another. We are part of one another. The only thing that separates us is these bodies and the natural way we see through these eyes. But in Christ, we are one. And I have abundant love for all the body of Christ, especially beloved people of the beloved ministry. Hallelujah. <laughs> God bless you. Let's pray just a minute. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. <clears throat> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Faith. I hear you. I heard you talking through me tonight, revealing the reality of yourself, to all of these sons. Help them. They need, they need the word to understand how you work and the ways that you work in. But tonight, I believe that they believe. I believe that they believe that you are alive and you are a precious member of the kingdom of God given to us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're always the best teacher. Hallelujah.